In this video, I will show you how to install BeanCount, configure your text editor, and define your accounts. I will be using the NeoVim text editor through this entire video series. But everything shown here will work just as well with pretty much every other text editor. So if I show you for example how to install a NeoVim syntax plugin, you will have to find a similar syntax plugin for the specific text editor which you are using. The very first thing we do is to install the BeanCount Python package with pip install BeanCount. This will give us tools like beancheck, beanreport and so on. Check the installation by running beancheck minus minus version. If this does not work, search on the internet on why your Python pip packages are broken. Next, make sure to install a syntax plugin for highlighting your transactions. This is not mandatory, but it makes everything way more readable. I also recommend the linter plugin, which will underline errors in your transactions right in your text editor. For NeoVim, I use NullLS with its beancheck integration. While NullLS is not being maintained anymore, it still works perfectly fine and is very stable. Links to all NeoVim plugins can be found in the video description. I have all my bean count and finance data in one directory, which I will create and then enter. And I highly recommend to track your changes with git, which is why I run git init. Now we can create the main file, which is also called the ledger. I will call it main.beancount. I am a fan of strict linting, which is why I will enable a few plugins that will allow for better and stricter checks. The first plugin is here to catch when we misspell the name of a commodity. And the second plugin will help us later when we try to sell stocks and other assets. These plugins and many other are documented in BeanCount's API reference. The last plugin will catch when we open a new account and then never use it. You can copy these definitions from the video description. Next step is to define the currency of our choice, which will be used through the entire file as the base currency. A currency can be declared by specifying a date from which on BeanCount should know about it. The date is followed by the commodity keyword and then the name of the currency. This can be UST, BTC or anything else you can come up with. But I choose Euro because I live in Europe. Then I set Euro as the default operating currency. And also set the default booking method for buying and selling assets to FIFO. It means first in, first out and will help us later when we try to pay taxes on our investments. Let's open the first account, our checking account. To do so, we input the date from which on BeanCount should know about this account. That is followed by the open keyword and the account's name. Each account name must start with a specific word, the account type. In this case, assets. Everything after that is a sub account separated by a colon. Sub accounts can be named and nested however you want. It is up to you how loose or precise you want to organize your finances. By default, each account can hold different currencies, assets and commodities. But I like to restrict our checking account to Euro because it is stricter and can catch errors in the future. The next account we need is the equity opening balance account. The equity account type is the most difficult to explain and understand, but it is only rarely needed. We have to use it at least in the beginning to initialize certain things. If I save the file, the linter will tell me that these two accounts are unused, but this will change soon. Now we need to tell BeanCount how much money is in our checking account. For this, we start with a date, followed by a star and then a description in quotes, opening balance. On the next line I start with two spaces and then put the account name there. This is followed by the amount of euros in my actual bank account and then the currency. If I save the file, our entire entry will be flagged as an error. This is because in BeanCount there is actually no such thing as just typing in how much money is inside an account. Instead, it only allows us to specify transactions. And each transaction always requires at least two things. It requires one account which receives the money and another account from which the money is taken from. So money must always move from account A to account B. This is the foundation of double entry accounting on which BeanCount is based. This may sound unusual to you, but it will make sense soon and it's awesome. So if we need one account to receive the money and another one to take it from, where do we find this mandatory second account? The secret lies in the equity opening balance account we created earlier. 
Let's fill it in and see our error disappear. So the thing that is going on right now is that we tell BeanCount that this amount of euros is going from the equity account to our checking account. Let's open more accounts and create some transactions. I will open an account from which our salary is being paid. Then I start a new transaction by entering a date, star and a description where you can write anything you want. The money goes to our checking account. Let's assume it's 2500 euro. The comma to separate the thousands is optional, but I like it for readability. The money comes from income salary. From that salary we now can pay rent. Let's create more accounts. I am splitting my rent into two sub-accounts, base rent and utilities. You can choose not to split it or to be even more granular with as many sub-accounts as you want. It's completely up to you. Now a transaction. Date, star and the address we live in as a description. This could also be the name of the company you are renting from or whatever description you prefer. This information is just for you and will be useful later when querying and analyzing data. Now money goes towards the base rent and towards the utility account. It is coming straight from our checking account. I personally don't write out my income and rent payments anymore. Instead, I download a CSV file from my bank account and convert it with a custom shell script to a list of BeanCount transactions. Then I include this transaction list from my main BeanCount file. But early on, before I automated all these tasks with shell scripts, I have relied on snippets. Writing a snippet is specific to each text editor. Here in NeoVim I use the AltiSnips plugin. Let's write one for our monthly salary payment. I won't further elaborate on the AltiSnips syntax, you can find this in the plugins documentation. The only important thing here is to copy over our salary transaction from earlier. Now I will replace the date with a shell command. This makes sure that each snippet gets expanded for the current month. After the date I insert a placeholder with a default value of 0, 1. You will see later what it does. The snippet I just wrote can be found in the video description. Let's go back to the main file. When I type salary, I can now expand it by pressing tab. As you see, our placeholder value of 0, 1 is now selected and I can overwrite it with the actual date at which we received our salary. 25. Done. Here are some more examples. I can expand the snippet ATM, which will expand to an ATM payout to my wallet. Here I have decided to have my snippet placeholder in the amount, which defaults to 200 euros. But I can overwrite it with 750 and I'm done. Or expand the snippet Aldi and then input how much I've paid for groceries. Let's use git to commit what we have. I have this piece of code in my NeoVim config, which automatically commits all changes to my BeanCount repository every time I close NeoVim. It can be found in the video description.